Hello, I am Jyotika. In the last video, I solved a research method section for A-level students for EQA board. Today, I will solve some of the questions on research methods for AS-level students. So, let us practice these questions. And this video should be helpful not only to AQA AS psychology students but also to students from other boards such as IB psychology, CIE or Edexcel. The search methods questions tend to be similar in all syllabi. Okay, let us begin. Here in section C, we have a scenario given to us. First, I'll just read out the scenario. A psychologist investigated the relationship between stress and illness at a local school. The psychologist placed an advert on the staff room notice board. Ten teachers contacted the psychologist offering to complete the psychologist's questionnaire. In the questionnaire, stress levels were measured on a scale from 1 to 10 with a higher score indicating greater stress. The questionnaire also asked how many days they had been absent from work due to sickness in the previous six months. Now the question they have asked us is, write a suitable operationalized non-directional hypothesis for this investigation. This question has come for three marks. Any time we have a question, first we should note the command term. It is just right. That means we need not explain what is a non-directional hypothesis or anything related to that. They just want us to state the hypothesis. Neither must we evaluate. No strengths, no weaknesses required. Then we should look at the marks. The marks are coming from the question directly. They want us to write an operationalized non-directional hypothesis. Operationalization means that you will have to present the dependent variable in measurable terms. So if you see in this scenario there are two dependent variables which you must have identified stress levels and days of absence from work. We can call them dependent variables or we can call them covariables since it is a correlation question. Any which ways that you take it, there are two variables that will have to be specified in measurable terms. So it should be obvious to you that for each of the variables that you present correctly in operational terms, you will get one mark. So that accounts for two marks. Next, they have asked you for a non-directional hypothesis. So if your hypothesis is indeed non-directional, that is you have used correct wording for a non-directional hypothesis, you will get one mark there. So make sure you cover all these three features correctly. This is a correlation question which we understand from the word relationship. Correlation questions are different from experimental questions, especially when it comes to hypothesis. In an experimental hypothesis, we would speak about the difference between two groups. Here, we would speak about the relationship between two variables. So first, in our mind, we need to identify which are the co-variables in this scenario. One is stress level and the other is days of absence. Here you can see actually where they have given the aim of the study, which you come to know from the word investigated that this is the aim. You can see clearly the variables are specified, relationship between stress and illness. However, why I have pointed out below is because we need operational definition. So stress levels is stated below and days of absence from work due to sickness. That is taken as operationalization of illness. So we will speak about stress levels and sickness rather than stress and illness because they want an operationalized hypothesis. Also, because it has to be measurable, we have to give how it has been measured or the terms of measurement as well. 
so stress levels has been measured in terms of a scale and sickness has been measured in terms of number of days of absence coming to the non directional part when it is a correlational study directional hypothesis means we specify the type of correlation that we expect and non directional hypothesis means that we do not specify which type of correlation we expect so we state that there is a correlation we do not say that there is no correlation that would be a null hypothesis so we state that there is a correlation only we do not specify whether it is positive or it is negative so keeping all these things in mind now i am going to write the hypothesis there is a significant relationship between stress levels measured on a scale from 1 to 10 and number of days of absence from work due to sickness in the past 6 months so one thing is i take my wording from the question itself next just to show you about the marking again since i have used the word significant relationship and not positive or negative correlation i will be given one mark since i have written the operational definition of the first variable i will get a second mark since i have written the operational definition of the second variable i will get a third mark that is how i will get my three marks on this answer let's come to the next question identify the sampling method used in this investigation it's for one mark and the command term is identify means we literally have to just name the method we do not need to explain it neither do we need to give any strengths or weaknesses of the method always write according to what is expected on the question to avoid wasting your time and to show that you have examination skills more than syllabus or content related skills okay now it was clearly mentioned when we read the question that there was an adverb placed on the staff room notice board reading that adverb tens teachers who were interested contacted the researchers this is typical description of volunteer sampling or self selected sampling some announcement is made and then participants come forward in this case the teachers have read the announcement on the notice board and have come forward to participate what we just have to write is volunteer sampling okay let's come to the next question the results from the study are shown in figure 1 below whenever we have a figure or a table in front of us first we should read the title the title says the relationship between stress level scores from 1 to 10 and number of days of so absent from work due to sickness in the previous 6 months on the next we should read the x axis on the x axis we have stress scores ranging from 0 to 10 on the y axis we have number of days off work sick that is also ranging starting from 0 but it goes up to 40 and we see a typical scatter plot or a dot plot in front of us okay let's see what they want us to answer from this graph first we can just note the general trend of the dots in our mind so we see mostly it's going upwards of course we are not making a definite regression line or something just taking an estimate that there seems to be some upward relationship between these dots which is a typical positive correlation so just keeping the diagram and idea in our mind let's see exactly what they want us to state 
what does the graph in figure one suggest about the relationship between stress and illness okay what has been asked and it is for two marks what is not a very clear command term so we can focus more on the marks it is for two marks so definitely when they ask a question about relationship they want us to give a definite relationship one mark they will give us for stating correctly which type of relationship we are getting so one mark for stating second for elaborating upon it or just explaining what that relationship is with reference to the graph shown one thing we always have to keep in mind in ao2 type of application questions we must use wording from the scenarios given and there's there's no point of given the scenarios they would have just asked us direct descriptive questions okay never give general answers like for this some students will have a tendency to write there is a positive relationship between the variables positive relationship means as the value of one variable increases the value of the other variable also increases that is correct but why do you think they have printed an entire graph and given to you in the paper if they just wanted a general answer like this okay so make sure you write correctly so how we should write the answer is taking the wording from the question the graph suggests a positive correlation between stress and illness that is higher the scores on stress greater are the number of days of from work sick let us move towards the next question explain why the psychologists could not conclude that stress caused illness on the basis of data in figure 1 explain means we have to give details 3 marks means we have to give at length why the psychologists could not conclude the answer is very obvious if we had to give in one line because the study is purely correlation i'll get one mark for stating that next i need to explain why we cannot in this particular scenario say that a conclusion of cause effect cannot be made so there are multiple ways of explaining this one is to give a third variable which could be the underlying reason for an increase in both the variables students are very poor in answering in this way so i would suggest against that because you would have to give some common variable between stress and illness as an example that would show that a third variable could be underlying increase in both so for example someone's genes are poor so they tend to take a lot of stress because of the genes and because of the genes they develop illness very easily like i said students don't explain this well they just say there's a third variable possible and they leave it at that they are not able to illustrate it well so i would suggest avoiding that type of an answer the better way of explaining is to talk about manipulation so in my next line for one point i would suggest that correlational studies do not involve manipulation of variables and in the third line making it specific to the scenario i'll explain what i mean by this so i would suggest that if there were a if we were to establish a cause effect relationship between stress and illness we would have to manipulate the variable of stress to suggest that it causes illness which has not been done in this study so that is the better way of easier way and more with students write accurately that way of explaining so i'll write it in this way okay the psychologist could not conclude this
बिकॉज दिस इज अ को रिलेशनल स्टडी एन एज्यूम्ड कॉज is not manipulated but only measured in these studies since the researcher has not manipulated levels of stress in their participants they cannot conclude that stress causes illness coming to the next question which two of the following best describes the stress level scores collected by the psychologist which means literally selection or picking out and we can clearly see it's a multiple choice type of question very importantly it's for two marks students are very accustomed to answering multiple choice questions and literally one option is the correct answer so in these type of questions repeatedly examiners state that they are in too much of a rush and they don't see that they have to pick out two of the following options they just assume one option has to be picked up and then for a very silly overlooking of what has been asked they just lose out on marks which they could have easily achieved question is simple it's just important to keep in mind that we need to mark two options describe stress level scores if we consider meta analysis meta analysis is a score that is derived from reviewing effect sizes in multiple studies in this scenario which we just read there was no such suggestion of reviewing a number of studies so certainly it is in meta analysis i'm just explaining you how to think about the options always think thoroughly when i speak out it seems like it takes too much time to think when you do it mentally it hardly takes any time it is worth the effort rather than just marking anything in a rush and later regretting that you didn't read through carefully so just consider all the options before marking out anything primary are the scores primary certainly they are because primary means first hand data or first hand information collected by researchers indeed in this study we saw that they collected information directly first hand from teachers qualitative data no because stress levels were measured on a scale from 1 to 10 that certainly is in qualitative data because qualitative data has to be descriptive this data was numerical quantitative yes it was quantitative data because it was numerical it was ranging from 0 to 10 secondary data although i don't need to consider this i've already got my two answers but like i said just to be very sure before marking anything let's consider this also secondary data means collecting data from some other study having data that was collected by some other researcher or documented elsewhere that is borrowed for the purpose of a study in this study there is no borrowing of data there is direct collection of data from teachers so it is certainly not secondary data so now that finally we have two answers and we are very sure that these are only the two we simply have to shade in to the space given to us next to the alternatives okay so that is it for today's practice from my side i know that there are more questions in this section however my time permits me to take this much of a class today i will try to return and complete the rest of the questions 
Thank you for watching this video.